Johnny and Tony were talking one day, shortly after Valentine's Day. And Johnny says to Tony, he says, Hey, hey, Tony, did you get your wife anything for Valentine's Day? Oh, yeah, said Tony. I, I bought her a belt and a bag. Oh, that's really nice, says, uh, says Johnny. I bet she appreciated the gift. I bet she was grateful for that. How about it? And Tony says, Yeah, uh, I, think, I, I think she was grateful. I'm not sure, but um, I'm pretty sure the vacuum cleaner works a whole lot better now, though. Tony, <laughs> a belt and a bag for the vacuum? Happy Valentine's Day? Hmm. You think Tony's wife was grateful? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, we're talking about gratefulness today on Transforming the World. My name is Pastor Greg. Have you ever done something for an individual and they all they ever did was grumble? You ever do that for somebody? Do you ever want to continue to help that person after they grumble to complain, even though you help them? Yeah, I didn't think so either. Who wants to help a, a person all all they ever do is complain about about stuff? It makes you wonder a little bit about God. Um why in the world was God so patient with, with the uh, descendants of uh, of Jacob as they, as they, uh, as they wandered out of Egypt? If, if you remember, remember your Old Testament story a whole lot. Um, you have, uh, um, you have Jacob and his, uh, and his extended family, ending up in Egypt. Well, eventually, these people, who we will eventually we'll call these individuals the people of Israel but they were the descendants of Jacob eventually they become slaves living in Egypt and that's the whole story with Moses you know God hears God hears their uh, their uh, their prayers uh, God sees what Egypt is doing to his people of Israel and so he sends Moses Moses comes in and gets you know with, without even fighting a war Moses gets the people released and off they go, headed across the Sinai Peninsula on their way to uh, uh, to what we now call modern day Israel. Uh, back in Old Testament times, it was, called, it was called the Promised Land. Well, as they make their way across the desert, you know, God keeps talking to them and says, look, I've, I've done all these things. I've rescued you. I've given you all these things. Uh, as they make their way across the desert, what ends up happening? Uh, we're thirsty. We're hungry. <laughs> they, they get to the promised land and it's like, they're too big and strong for us. You mean, I mean, they sound like spoiled kids, right? Wine, 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 complain, complain. And it, there seemed to be a lack of gratitude in most of the people's hearts. Most of the people's hearts there that were sojourning, if you will, they're making their way out of Egypt into the promised land. Uh, very, very little gratitude for what God was doing for them. And, and yet, you know, God continues to be patient for a while he does. Why is it that we expect God to make our life perfect? Why is it that you and I expect God to do everything he can so that there is not one area of our life where we are inconvenienced or made uncomfortable? Why is that? I think it has a lot to do with our attitude toward God. Much like these people in Israel, they saw God as their genie in a bottle, if you will, uh, that he was there to make everything right, to fix everything, um, to take away all their hardship and all their suffering so they wouldn't have to lift a finger and do anything. And that's, <laughs> that's not what God had in mind as he was leading the people from captivity into freedom, into the promised land. Out of curiosity, 
What causes us to be ungrateful? What causes a person to be ungrateful? Or let's move it ahead to New Testament times, to, to today's times, and our own hearts. What causes us to be ungrateful? Is it because we expect certain things in our life? We have expectations that our life will be smooth, that uh, we'll never have to be inconvenienced by anything? Is that what we expect? If that's what we expect, if we expect our lives to be, uh, to, to never have to be inconvenienced, if, if we expect our lives to, 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 to be absolutely perfect and not challenged in any way, and then the moment we end up facing a challenge or an inconvenience or a setback or a delay of some, some sort, we shake our fist and we grumble, we're ungrateful toward God. Or, or, or better yet, listen, listen to what James says. <clears throat> In in um, in James uh, James chapter four verses one through three, he says we want what gives us pleasure, and when we don't receive it, we act like ungrateful, spoiled children who go to God demanding that He give us what we want. That's my paraphrase of uh, uh, James James chapter uh, James chapter four one through three. Spoiled, ungrateful children. That's what we sound like when, when we go to God complaining about um, the momentary setbacks that we have to deal with or the days where things don't necessarily go our way. We have to wait or we have to change our plans because God has something else in mind. I would suggest that ungratefulness is birthed in the heart of a human being, especially in a human being who claims to be Christian, but ungratefulness is there because that person doesn't really see God for who he is. The ungrateful Christian, their God is too small. Their God is someone that they can manage as if if there was a box that they could keep him in and God fits there whenever they want whatever they want they they open up the box and pull God out and ask you know God fix this solve this make me feel better take all my problems away and when you do I'll put you back in a box and forget about you for another month or so the ungrateful Christian's God is too small we don't recognize God for who he truly really is his majesty, his splendor, his grandeur. God's not obligated in any way, shape, or form to give us one single blessing. And yet he does. And yet God does. He chooses to give us blessings. Blessings, abundant blessings that overflow in our lives. And yet when we don't get what we want, we whine and complain like those people wandering through the wilderness they had been released from slavery and yet they complained i want to encourage you my friend to have a attitude of gratitude not just to the people around you but to god as well i suggest to you that even even if you catch a momentary glimpse at the fullness of God. Just a momentary glimpse at the fullness of God. Your heart will be transformed and your heart will be changed. You're grumbling. You're grumbling about being inconvenienced will turn to gratitude. Gratitude for all that God has done and gratitude for all that God says he will do in your life. Take a look at uh, one more example of gratitude tomorrow as we continue our study here on Transforming the World. Thanks for spending time with me today. My name is Pastor Greg.